Hello friends, this is a video of robotic TAPP for paramblical hernia. We insufflate abdomen from palmer's point using varies, mark 7.5 cm all around the hernial defect and place ports as laterally as possible, usually around anterior axillary line. After doing diagnostic laparoscopy, we reduce the hernial contents. Now, this step can be performed laparoscopically as well, especially if the content is bowel. I have a fenestrated bipolar in my left hand and a scissor in my right hand. We make markings onto the peritoneal surface along the intended line of incision first and then gain access to the periperitoneal space. Now to start with, my camera is 30 degree up as we are working onto the roof here. Initial incision on peritoneum is tricky as if one is not careful may enter retractor space and then gaining back access to pre peritoneal space is a bit challenging. Now you see I'm using my left hand here to create some space into the pre peritoneal space first and then using my scissor to incise it. can be very well appreciated here that the peritoneum is super thin and I am using my left hand instrument to grasp it and then divide or push it. Now when I am holding it with my left hand there is no haptic feedback so you need to be careful that you use your visual cues or visual feedback for this dissection as it may cause button holes if you are not careful enough. Once we start approaching midline into the preperitoneal fatty area, the dissection becomes much easier. Patient selection is important whenever we are starting doing TEPPs for ventral hernias. Male patients of BMI around 30, small prandium lichens with minimal or no red divarication are good to start with. It is always tough to do TAPPs in patients with large diverticulation. The idea should be to bring down all the fatty tissue and bear the posterior of the sheet. However, in areas with fat deficient peritoneum, some components of posterior of the sheet can be brought down. We do dissection all around the hernial defect first, cranially as well as caudally, before dealing with the hernial defect. Please walk along for sheet to sheet and try to bring down all the fat. The beauty of true pre vaterinal dissection is that even a small defect into the PRS like this one can be identified and dealt with. We start working near the umbilical hernial defect and reduce the hernial sac. We need to be careful that we do not cause any iatrogenic injury to the umbilical skin. And the role of bedside assistant is crucial here. Now we are dealing with the supraumbilical hernial sac 
and we try to bring down the honey sack intact whenever possible. After defining the boundary of supramlical hernia, we then deal with the umbilical area. All this dissection is being done with camera in 30 degree up position. Switching camera to 30 degree down becomes helpful in dissection beyond this point. Throughout the surgery, the common steps that we have been performing are we are retracting tissue with our left hand, we are buzzing with the right and then pushing it. So it's retract, buzz, push, retract, buzz, push and swimming maneuvers whenever required. Also throughout the dissection, we are being guided by bedside assistant or surgeon who have been using compressive forces and letting us know the limit of our dissection or the areas in which we are dissecting. Again, as we start approaching the distalmost portion of the dissection and the peritoneum gets thinner and thinner, we got to be careful as there is no haptic feedback and inadvertent buttonholes can happen here. We always try to create larger pockets wherever feasible. Now we have completed our dissection here and now we are defining the boundary of dissection that is again guided by bedside assistant or surgeon. We also go a few millimeters or a centimeter more beyond the predetermined areas of dissection. This helps us in better placement of mesh. We used barbed 1O non observable suture for defect closer. After taking few rows of sutures, we reduce the intra-abdominal pressure, maybe to 6 to 8 millimeters of mercury, and then we approximate the sutures. Now here we are closing the hernial defect as well as the umbilical ring area, and then we divide it using suture cut needle driver. This is a 15 into 12 centimeter mesh that is being used here. We find unfolding the mesh easier if it has been folded from both the ends towards the center unlike here where it was folded from one end. Point fixation of the mesh can be done. Now you can use sutures, tackers or glues as per your convenience.
If we are using sutures for point fixation, air knotting should be done. Normally, I would do point fixation at the four corners. Unlike this one, where there is some memory, and therefore I am taking a couple of bites more. We typically used barbed 3O absorbable sutures for flap closure. The importance of forming large peritoneal flaps can be understood here. Now, whenever we are making large peritoneal flaps, the flap is redundant and therefore there is less chances of buttonholes when we are closing the peritoneal flap. This brings us to the end of the procedure. Thank you for watching.